Hello, I'm James Hollis on behalf of the Young Society of Washington. Um, all of us are interested in dreams, where they come from, what they mean. And of course, the truth of the matter is nobody knows. There are tons of theories about dreams. Uh, we all have them. Uh, sleep research tells us we have several dreams uh, every evening, whether we remember them or not. Most people say, I don't dream or I don't remember my dreams, but uh, we all do. And um, people have, through the millennia, thought about their dreams. The ancients often thought they were direct messages from the gods and often took them very seriously, often very literally. Uh, often in bookstores, there are books that are remaindered for dream dictionaries. Uh, most of these are pretty worthless, frankly, because they're someone's ideas about what images ought to mean in dreams. And the truth is, Anybody can have an image in a dream. For example, let's say you dream of your grandmother tonight, and I dream of my grandmother, but they're different grandmothers. So, yes, there's something called grandmotherliness, and so we might say there's, there's some common element, perhaps, in those images, and that might be germane in a particular dream. But we also have to look to the uniqueness of that person's experience. So when we approach a, a person's dream, we first look to the objective level of the dream. Is this dream in some way perhaps commenting on that person's outer life? And perhaps underlining or processing something that has gone on in that individual's life? Now having said that, too often we overly interpret the dream as, oh, I know what that means. Uh, that, that came from what happened at work yesterday, or I saw that on the news last night before I went to sleep. And we sort of dismiss it and say, well, I can explain that away. But it doesn't really address the question why did my psyche find it necessary to underline um, that particular issue and bring it to my attention? And the truth is, it's really probably a way of saying this issue really triggered something in you, and it might be about something altogether different. So we need to sort of say, why is the psyche laboring to bring something to our attention that is so apparently obvious? Maybe it's addressing some other issue. And Jung suggested that f most of the time our dreams are really compensatory in nature, that they're, they're trying to bring some other value or some other uh, situation to mind that perhaps we're neglecting in our conscious life. When we look at the subjective level of the dream, we begin to look at the various aspects of the dream as aspects of ourselves. And it gets very difficult. So if I dream of my spouse or of a child or someone that I know very well, am I dreaming about that person or am I using that person to sort of embody some issue or energy within myself? And we sort of have to approach it at both levels. And it can refer to both levels. So we have to keep working this imagery to sort of see what, uh, what connects to that dreamer in a feeling way. The key element is to work with the associations of the dreamer. I might have a very uh, ingenious approach to what I think your dream is about and be completely off the, the target because I'm, I'm projecting my own issues on you or I'm projecting what I think uh, the dream ought to mean when in fact it's coming out of a whole subjective frame of reference that I may know nothing about and you may know nothing about. All we can do is say, over time, if we track dreams, we begin to realize how these threads, these, these recurrent images, bring to the surface uh, issues that are important for us. Jung suggested sometimes it's not so much the single dream, although sometimes they can be very powerful. In fact, some dreams have actually changed history. But it's the threads, it's the themes, it's the issues that keep popping up. It's also important from time to time to look back on dreams. If you record them and return them to them uh, from time to time, you'll realize, I didn't realize that issue was showing up in my life in the unconscious that long ago. Maybe an issue in a relationship or an issue around a career. And often things are being worked at in the unconscious long before they bubble to the surface. So one of the things that um, we find as we work with dreams is we begin to take this dialogue with an inner source uh, more seriously. We begin to work with the question of a personal authority. The, the central task of the second half of life is the recovery of a personal authority. And we begin to realize that there's some kind of intelligence inside of each one of us that is working very hard to um, speak to us, 
to comment on our lives, to um, offer perspective. It only makes sense to stop from time to time to listen, to dialogue, to pay attention. And, and many times we find that so often in our lives we're responding to whatever the pressures are outside. And no wonder we, we see the same old patterns, the same outcomes over and over and over. But when we begin to listen to that very deep authority within inside, the center of gravity shifts. And we begin to find a, a much deeper, personally grounded center in each of us. And then we have a deeper sense of personal dignity, capacity, sense of worth, and I think a, a personal authority that allows us to conduct a far more considered life and a life of, of greater personal authenticity. So I would invite each of you to think a lot about your dreams, reflect on them, write them down, uh, think about the associations with each of the images, possibly talk about them with another person. Sometimes their perspective can cast light on those images and um, begin to respect them. Nature doesn't waste energy. It's, it's seeking to communicate to us in some way which, if we pay attention, may begin to heal some of the splits that we all carry. Thank you.